Hey, what's going on? It's Justin Gazub, uh, and this is Living and Moving right here in Seattle, Washington. In today's video, we're gonna deep dive into the mean streets of Ballard right here in the beautiful Pacific Northwest. If you haven't already, like, subscribe, follow along. But this is the channel that gives you the nitty gritty, the deep dives into what it's like to live, work, eat, sleep, play right here in the greater Seattle metro area. I'm a real estate broker in the area. Feel free to reach out and connect. Uh, in these videos, I try to give you all the nitty gritty details, everything that you need to know about living and moving here to the area. And in this video, we're gonna do it big. We're gonna give you uh, a true deep dive into the neighborhood of Ballard. Uh, it's gonna be a full vlog tour, so let's get after it. Before we get too far into the video, look, we're gonna do, there's five neighborhoods in Ballard. We're gonna hit all five, and you're gonna wanna stay to the very end because I'm gonna share some more details and information on what uh, a lot of folks uh, you know, refer to as the homelessness crisis and the, uh, the crime here in Ballard. So I'm gonna give you my thoughts on that, but you're gonna have to stay to the end. So keep an eye out for that. Okay, so this is what I would consider kind of the heart of Ballard right here. Uh, it's right off of Market, 22nd, and this is where you're gonna find a lot of shops and restaurants. A lot of Ballard is, hopefully that wind doesn't pick up too bad for you, but a lot of Ballard, Ballard is really its own independent city that was annexed by Seattle, uh, I wanna say in the early 19, 1900s might have been the late 1800s so I'd have to double check but that's why you'll see it's it's really set up you know as its own area that uh, is you know has its own kind of appeal and really feels like it's its own city like its own small town you'll see that uh, you know, a lot of the buildings are only six stories and that kind of lower, low-rise area uh, gives it more of a, a small town feel. So I'm just walking down, I think I'm on 22nd, just walking down the street, you can see some of the shops behind me. We'll take a look at some other stuff. This is like one of those weird summer days that uh, we rarely get. This August for us has been uh, some kind of records with how many times it's been over 80 degrees in Seattle in August. I think we're double the normal average, right? So normally we only have about eight days that are over 80 in August. We've already hit like 16. Get some humid ones here too. And all this wind, uh, we're expecting lightning and thunderstorms tomorrow. Um, just to, you know, just to share with you like this wind and everything, it's pretty wild. This is a little different for us, uh, but it seems to be getting actually more and more normal with these thunderstorms. Anyway, let's get back to looking at Ballard. Walking down Leary, Leary becomes a thoroughfare. I want to get over here on the Ballard Ave. This is kind of where the cuter, you know, stuff that everybody knows is. So I'm just coming down. Looks like Vernon from Leary to Ballard Ave. I don't want to give you some perspective on the shops and stuff and then just, you know, keep showing you. We'll get into the nitty gritty stuff too. So one of the things about Ballard is that uh, uh, makes it pretty idyllic. There's lots of great tree cover in the streets and Seattle does a pretty good job of trying to maintain that. Uh, it can be kind of obnoxious if you're a homeowner, uh, but a lot of the side streets and a lot of the other main roads will have these really nice, nice tree cover. Even coming in off a of market, there's some really good trees. It kind of feels more like a town that way than a big city. Okay, 
Okay, so we just spent a minute walking around uh, down Ballard Ave, kind of. This is where that section 22nd, Leary, Ballard Ave, Marvin's Garden. The bell tower is just behind me. Can't really see it here in the shot, but I'll show you the bell tower. And so when you think of Ballard, there's like three things that you think about for most people. It's it's the shops on, on Ballard Ave. It's the breweries in the kind of the Gilman Park neighborhood uh, and the brewery district that's more industrial. And then for a lot of folks, it's still that Scandinavian influence, fishing boats and the Ballard locks. One thing that has been popping up is the fact that, you know, hey, Seattle doesn't really have any laws against parking an RV on the side of the road and, and living in it. And because of the industrial nature of Ballard, you get quite a bit of that here. So I wanna show you around a few of the other shops and, and other places too that are worth, that are notable and worth checking out. Uh, but also I don't wanna hide anything from you. I want you to be able to kind of see for yourself what that looks like. So we're gonna to try to capture some of that without offending anybody uh, as personal space and you know, kinda, I don't wanna, I don't want it to come across like I'm uh, using kind of their, the, the unfortunate situation that they found themselves in for any kind of, you know, whatever. But since you're watching this video, you want to know everything there is to know about Ballard, we're going to show you all everything. So let's, uh, let's keep going and uh, we'll get after the brewery district next. <music> I know I said we'd hit the brewery district next, but just want to give a little shout out to Market Street. It's a busy thoroughfare, cuts right in through here. Uh, you know, it's kind of the main corridor from coming into Ballard. Uh, Market Street and Leary uh, are your east to wests, and then uh, north to south, you can do 15, 99, get you in here. Um, so there's a ton of shops and restaurants, bars, and breweries in Ballard and Market Street is one of those good thoroughfares as well. Okay, so we drove over from the Adams neighborhood, which is where uh, that section of Ballard that we were in that has, you know, Ballard Avenue. Uh, most people just call the whole area Ballard, but there are different neighborhoods inside of Ballard that was Adams. Now we're over in West Woodland, which is west of, uh, um, or east of 15th. Uh, there is a Woodland neighborhood, and then there's West Woodland, which is where we're at. So West Woodland, as we walk around, this, this neighborhood has all, you know, has houses, has industrial area you know you got to think about the old fishing industry that uh, really kind of grew up around here and uh, um, that's one of the reasons that this is a multi-zone and different you know different kind of neighborhood houses back here and and then this is where most of the breweries are not all the breweries but most of the breweries are in this kind of industrial zone so just out in front of lucky envelope let me show you uh, show you the outside here so Ballard's one of the neighborhoods in Seattle that early on started to push for uh, density. So as we go through the neighborhood, you'll start to see, you know, you'll see different industrial and uh, uh, commercial buildings, but you'll also see a lot of older homes on main streets. Uh, and then you'll start to see a lot of construction as well. Now we are just walking uh, down, gosh, I think this is, 14th, uh, I'm gonna cross Northwest 49th Street on our way down, you know, we're headed walking south towards the Fred Meyer that's down here. Let me check my streets. Oh, we're on 9th, so a little bit further, further off, but you'll see like behind me, you know, Central Welding. That's a, uh, uh, 
a place where people go and get welding supplies, right? Because we're in an industrial area. You'll see some, you know, Winnebago's parked on the side of the street that, that I had told you about earlier that, that um, you know, uh, people in unfortunate situations, homelessness is, is, a, is a real issue. And so we see people that are living in those motorhomes. Um, there's a neon sign place over here and you know there's a fair isle brewing back back there down 49th and then right here we've got uh, where yonder and uh the bail breaker put together a tap room they paired up to do that so let me get to some shade i can show you that over my shoulder there so that's one of the actually they have the biggest beer garden uh outside seating uh, in the seattle area here uh, is over at that location and then you've got you know a bunch of fabricators and stuff so this is i'm just walking down 49th here uh, between 8th and 9th avenue we'll throw up some maps so that you can see around uh, just around the corner is where fremont brewing has another facility that they brew beer in even though their tap room and and their uh, uh, brewery is uh, in fremont they do have this facility uh, here in in ballard and then there is a Rubens Brewing has their own facility. There's a winery here, right? And uh, I'll show you this. The street kind of has it all, which is kind of fun to show you. Uh, you know, these are townhouses, newer townhouses that were put in. And so it's a good mix of, you know, fairly walkable, you know, new construction, a lot of old houses, industrial, and, and breweries here in, in this part of town, this West Woodland part of town so we'll bring up the map and and show you kind of where west woodland is okay so 8th and 49th 8th runs north to south uh from leary which leary kind of starts in the north end and then heads east to west so it ends up being a thoroughfare 8th ends up being another thoroughfare that runs north to south here that uh, uh you'll hear a lot of traffic on uh, the goodwill is up on like 65th and I've done, I think I've done a video on Tangletown before, not, excuse me, not Tangletown, um, Stumbletown, which is the, the kind of the restaurants and bars right there on 65th by the Goodwill. Um, but the reason I wanted to walk down 8th is because I'm gonna take a shot going south and show you kind of the southern, you know, as you drive down 8th, you'll see uh, some more RVs and, and that sort of thing. Cause we're in that industrial area and, you know, you know, I don't want to make a big deal out of it, but I also want to show you that the, the homelessness is, is prevalent. So let's take a look at that and I'll show you the uh, other facility for Fremont Brewing and Ruben's got some facilities over here too. So just behind me, not this chain link fence, but back there is that Fremont Brewing uh, not in Fremont, it's in Ballard, but that's one of their facilities where they where they brew beer. We're just coming up on one of Ruben's facilities here. And so I wanna show you, show you that, cause it's, I mean, I've just been walking since we got out of the car and I've probably gone like four blocks, you know? So I'll try to bring it up on the map and, and show you kind of some of this stuff. Obviously big changes happening here. Okay, so this is Ruben's. I think they're calling it the canning line now. And uh, um, I actually did a video in this facility when it first opened with the owner, Adam, um, just kind of highlighting the, the tap room. And uh, I think they're only doing private events right now. Things shifted for them during COVID, um, but that's one of their facilities there. And then, so we are kind of down a little closer to Leary and the substation down here. And so just want to show you guys a little bit and then be able to get back uh, and show you a little bit more about the neighborhoods here in the Ballard area. So you can get a well-rounded feel for the area. So hopefully this isn't too confusing. I know I've mentioned Leary a few times, but Leary doesn't necessarily follow an east to west or north, uh, north to south trajectory. There are some curves in the road and some long swoops. 
as it winds through this downtown, not downtown, but this area that's close to Leary, you know, on the other, you get close to the Fremont cut and the Ballard locks. And that's one of the reasons that makes that road such a thoroughfare and has all these warehouses built up around it because it was truly, you know, the center of industry. And so it can feel super confusing uh, and it feels like everything's just off Leary um, because it's a big road, it's a long road and it, and it intersects with a lot of the different north and south uh, corridors that, that come through. So uh, I'll try to make sense of it. I know I'll do another video for you guys that is a map video and plot out some of these spots to help kind of make more sense of it. But right now I'm just trying to give you an honest feel for what it's like down here in Ballard. Like I said, I'm gonna hit up a couple of the other breweries here on the West Woodland section, and then we'll jump into some of the neighborhoods. So just a, a fun fact, if you're into it, this uh, gray building behind me is actually one of Dale Chihuly's, the glass artist, and they were one of the first to tear out all the grass and put in stone and rockery so that people couldn't set up tents on the side of their uh, the road where there's you know they have the responsibility to maintain that you can, well i don't know if you can see it but just down here there's a, a tent set up doesn't look like anybody's home in that one but there is just a tent over there on the median between the curb and the sidewalks there and so that's that's kind of this this area for you we've got a lot of these uh um eco bricks let me see if i can show you a good view of one of these eco bricks that are on the side of the roads because the business owners you know they're not supposed to be here uh there's there's a lot of uh you know politicking about them um, but these bricks here they're called eco bricks and they get put up so that the rvs can't park here right so uh it's kind of the uh, um you know the uh, uh, fight against against that homelessness uh, that there just doesn't seem to be a solution for and so so that's why we see that so show you a couple of more things like i said down here in the brewery district and then it changes markedly as you go north of market street into uh loyal loyal heights whittier heights those neighborhoods of ballard sunset hill uh we're gonna kind of try to check all that out so let's get after it Okay, so we're at 11th and 52nd. Urban Family's behind me. Stoops just down the street. There's a couple other spots on this street here. At the end around the corner is, is where Ruben's uh, beer garden is. And so this kind of area is brings in a lot of folks, a lot of crowds. This is what a lot of folks would consider the brewery district, even though we just walked around the block from Lucky Envelopes right around the corner. Yonder and Bale Breaker, easy walk from here too, just a couple of blocks. Now, so I've been walking around, you know, this neighborhood for a little bit. It's Tuesday. It's about three o'clock for me. You know, and who knows when you're watching this, but it's amazing to me how much you smell the malt and the hops and everything just from walking around this neighborhood right here. Obetz is right here in front of me. Uh, they kind of do things like a traditional check way, pretty fun little place, um, but it just smells like brewery. And then the other smell, the other smell you get is metal to metal welding and grinding. So it feels just like kind of a tough as nails, you know, beer and welding uh, neighborhood. So I know you guys aren't picking up on that. So I thought I'd share that with you, but let me catch a shot of Obes. They got a really cool mural here. walking through and you're looking at all the industrial businesses you'll notice a lot of marine supply and hydraulics and fishing uh, there is actually a pickleball uh, manufacturer over here as well and just all kinds of all kinds of creative uh, industrial spaces here um, this building here is super fun serious pies moved in there uh, they're you know a savory pie shop um, down the street is 
Uh, that's where Rubens is. We're on 14th now and we're walking north. The wind's getting pretty bad here, so uh, I'm gonna cut out and walk back and then we'll get up into the neighborhoods. So we were just down in that brewery district of West Woodland, right? But West Woodland does come up into uh, a neighborhood where there's some houses on the north side of Market. And so as you come up the north side of Market, you know, this area, you'll notice all this construction behind me because this is one of the areas that they're pushing for density. And so uh, there's some new townhomes in front of me. Uh, there used to be a, a large, a large, uh, I think, man, it might have been a halfway house. It was uh, our youth home over here. Over here with, uh, where that one is being built used to be a, a duplex. Um, but you'll still have these great, you know, brick Tudor homes in West Woodland in the area here. And we're just on ninth, eighth is just over there market is just behind me uh, and then uh, um, 56 that's just in front of me so I know it's a little bit harder to follow along with you know the directions um, so we'll do a we'll do a map video for you as well uh, just to kind of give you an idea and I'll plug through kind of where we were it's hard to hit all the neighborhoods in Ballard but there are five distinct neighborhoods in Ballard everybody just calls it Ballard um, but we're in West Woodland, we'll get over to Sunset, we'll go to, uh, I guess we started in Adams, then West Woodland, we'll hit Sunset Hill, Loyal Heights, and then Whittier Heights there. So, um, kind of in that order, but just wanted to show you a little bit of these streets here in West Woodland. So. Okay, so before we get up into the neighborhoods and before we go look at like Sunset Hill or Loyal Heights or Whittier Heights or those neighborhoods that are north of Market, I drove from 9th, I drove west on Leary over uh, to <laughs> the Nordic Heritage Museum. You can see the cut behind me. This is actually like one of the smallest public parks because uh, it's just like a little place to put your kayak in, uh, but it's public access. Uh, right there and we are now on gosh I want to say give me one second I'm gonna have to edit the video 28 so we drove 20 blocks about to get over here because there is a handful of things at this end of town as we get closer to Sunset Hill which is the furthest west portion of Ballard on the slope that looks out over the beautiful sunsets on the hill Sunset Hill uh, but we've got the Kiss Cafe down here, and behind me we've got the Nordic Heritage Museum, and then there's some other shops uh, this way that come off from uh, 24th and head west towards 32nd. So again, this is all still Adams. As soon as we get to 32nd over there, technically is Sunset Hill. That's where the Senior Center is. So we're gonna head over there next and show you the little pocket neighborhood of the shops and restaurants on Sunset Hill, and then some of the houses over there so you can get an idea of what that looks like. It's an undertaking. Ballard isn't a neighborhood, it's an old city that was annexed. And so it is big when you think about Ballard, you know, it used to be its own city. So there's a lot of land mass here to cover. Uh, we're trying to show you everything that we can. So you can get kind of a really good feel for the area and uh, hopefully we're doing a good job here for you. So let's get over into Sunset Hill. And of course, the other thing that's on this end of town is the Ballard Locks. If you watch the video around Magnolia and the Magnolia neighborhood, uh, I went over to the Ballard Locks to show you a little bit of that, uh, but that is a point where you can cross over between, over the cuts where all the ships come in to Lake Union, 
from the Puget Sound. And uh, uh, it is kind of a feat of engineering and uh, really kind of cool. So uh, that's right over here, uh, right on the cusp of Sunset Hill, uh, here on the side of Ballard as well. Okay, so I wanna just take a break right here. Uh, appreciate you guys. If you've watched the video this far, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, help that YouTube algorithm out. Uh, Ballard is massive. Uh, we just hit up, I didn't show you um, the Ballard Locks. You can check out the Magnolia video and see a little bit more about that. I'm coming down Shill Shoal, which is kind of the uh, extension of market as we head further west. And Sunset Hill is, is the water's behind me and Sunset Hill's in front of me. But I got to show you Golden Gardens. So we're going to head down to Golden Gardens. It's one of the few sandy beaches here uh, in Seattle that you can get access to. And so I'm going to run down. It's only another five more minute drive. Hopefully we can find parking. This is one of those rare sunny days I was telling you about. So it's probably going to be crowded, but at least want to show you that. And then we'll duck through the neighborhoods and uh, see some houses and see kind of some of the other little pocket neighborhoods that uh, uh, Ballard has to offer. All right, so we made it to Golden Gardens. I'm gonna flip around so you can see over my shoulder here. All those boats in the background. We were just over at Shill Shoal Marina. Wanted to show you a clip of that because that's one of the uh, largest municipal min marinas. And uh, um, I've gone there for sailing lessons myself and trying to get back in a boat and, uh, from college. And it's a ton of fun over there. And so a lot of great boats over there. But this is, this is that Golden Gardens I wanted to show you. Uh, it's got uh, little food concessions, Miri's right here. And just views and sand and awesomeness. Wind is really starting to pick up, but uh, hopefully you can hear the audio okay. It's got this great bit of trees right here. A lot of people hanging hammocks and hanging out in the shade. And you saw that all that sandy beach, it loops all the way around. A little pond up here, uh, but you get tremendous views and it's a nice open space. I'm kind of walking across a field right now that a lot of people come out and play frisbee or soccer on. Uh, there's uh, over in front of the, uh, the building over there, they've got um, set up for volleyball. Nobody was playing today, but they do have that those facilities and there's trails, a couple of short trails, beach trails to walk around on here. And then up in that hill, there's a dog park, the Golden Gardens Dog Park. Uh, and there's additional parking up towards the dog park. And there's some other additional parking right there at that tree line. So you can get a lot of people down here and uh, access to a lot of a lot of stuff. So don't want to come to the end of the field because there's a little duck pond and sometimes there's some turtles that are actually out. So let's see what we can see, I'll show you. Okay, so I could only see three turtles, but doing this all on my uh, 2020 iPhone SE, can't really zoom into it, so. But if you make your way out here, usually some turtles and some ducks hanging out, especially if it's sunny out, so. Let's make our way up through Sunset Hill and uh, we'll keep this, keep this moving. Okay, so now we're up in Sunset Hill, aptly named because sun and hill make for wicked sunsets, faced west. Uh, and so you do get some amazing sunsets. It's uh, getting on to be five o'clock uh, now when we're shooting and uh, they've been just running around, running around. <laughs> and so we'll show you some of the stuff in the neighborhoods, but I wanted to come down to this. Uh, we're on 32nd and uh, 32nd Avenue Northwest. That's kind of the big thoroughfare that runs north to south uh, that uh, uh, kind of breaks Sunset Hill away from, uh, I think it's Loyal Heights uh, is the next neighborhood and Whittier is further uh, as it chunks out on the map. But I wanted to show you this little pocket neighborhood right here at Northwest 65th Street. 
and 32nd Avenue Northwest. Uh, just so that you can kind of see, Ballard has a lot of these little pockets throughout that uh, has some small shops. There used to be a lot more trolley cars uh, until the, you know, the, you can watch documentaries on it and the bus companies bought up all the trolleys and got rid of all the trolley cars uh, and put everybody on buses. And now hopefully, hopefully we're headed back to, to trolleys. But that's kind of how these neighborhoods developed the, the old way uh, of you know the 1800s and how things were set up back then. And that's why we see all these corner stores in these neighborhoods. So just kind of want to show you this little neighborhood right here. Just these couple of shops that are a handful of shops right here so you can get a taste for it. So right behind me are these new construction townhomes. I thought it was pretty slick actually when they built these because they, uh, they come to kind of a dead end road. It doesn't go all the way through. So from their rooftop deck, they have a direct view of the Olympic mountains. So pretty sweet. See the house on the corner. So Sunset Hill, obviously it slopes down into Golden Gardens there. And a lot of these houses that are built, a lot of these houses that are built are built, you know, with the slope, they're facing westward and they get those views of the sunset. What I really enjoy about this particular neighborhood is there's a lot of different stylistically, you know, different types of homes that have been built here over the course of, you know, decades, you know, hundred years. And so you have, you have your, you know, contemporary homes that are being built now. You have your craftsmen, your true 1920s craftsmen. You've got your 1930s Tudors. You've got your 1890s uh, original Seattle box house, the four square. Um, you know, everything that you could imagine is, is built right here in this neighborhood. So I wanna to try to show you just a handful of the houses and then we're gonna take uh, a little bit of a drive again to Sunset Hill Park because it's a little, little hazy, but I'll try to show you kind of some of the views from that park, that out look out over Puget Sound and into the Olympics. So a long time ago, I put together this PDF of the 14 different Seattle home types. Uh, I'll try to find it and drop a link to it down below if you're interested in that kind of thing. Uh, it's fun for it's fun for house nerds who love design and architecture and kind of gives you an idea about uh, um, what the different architectural styles are. And you can pretty much go decade by decade of when styles change and see kind of those differences as we come out of Victorians, move into four squares then craftsmen's, bungalows, tutors, you know, and uh, and on. Uh, I think I got my tutors and bungalows decades back uh, messed up there. Uh, but you'll see all kinds of stuff like this. I may even have an old video on that if you're if you're interested. Let me know down below in the comments and I'll, I'll send you a link or figure out a way to link up that old video. I mean, really old video. But if you're into it, it could be fun. I'll send it to you. So I was coming over to the park, I just remembered this street, 33rd, that has these great tutors. Um, really, really beautifully done. Fantastic brick tutors that I thought I'd show you super quick. And then, and then we'll head over to the park. One of the things that uh, that I really love about Sunset Hill and this neighborhood is the quality of home, is the you know the quieter streets, is the you know the more space and the bigger lots, and you know there's not too many neighborhoods in Seattle that compare to Sunset Hill. Uh, maybe Queen Anne, maybe Laurelhurst, uh, some parts of Ravenna that have that this kind of design and appeal and this kind of quality of home. So 
here at the park, I'm trying to focus in on the mountains, it's a little hazy, but man, this park is it's right here, perfect for sunsets, aptly named Sunset Hill. And so had to show you that. Want to get off, uh, out into a couple of the other neighborhoods here, show you around and uh, take a sneak peek. So we'll head out. Okay, so we just came over a little bit east to Sunset Hill. This is 25th running up and down right here. And we are right next to Loyal Heights Elementary School, fresh from a, a renovation and uh, uh, welcome them back students here shortly. And uh, I just wanted to show you kind of this area, Loyal Heights, the elementary school here. Uh, it is a neighborhood neighborhood. There's lots of houses. 25th, the next road over is 24th. Now 24th is a major thoroughfare for this side. So you have 32nd on Sunset Hill, north to south, 24th over here, Loyal Heights, north to south. Then you'll get to 15th major thoroughfare, and then 8th is gonna be your next major thoroughfare. And so this little square section here of Loyal Heights is, you know, it's a, it's a quiet neighborhood and uh, lots of cute little houses. And there's some shops on 24th, uh, one of which is uh, the bakery. And, uh, and the name now, oh my gosh, now that I'm talking about it, the name just escaped me. Um, gonna have to go look. Larson's Bakery. Larson's Bakery on 24th has been there forever. It's a staple in the community. It's a, um, a really, you know, renowned and known bakery, especially during the holidays. So it's super worth checking out if you're in the area, uh, especially, like I said, around the holidays, they, they do Danish, uh, the Danish Kringles, um, sell out all the time. Bill Nye, uh, Bill Nye, if you remember Bill Nye, the science guy, he got a start on a show called Almost Live that was uh, here in Seattle and they often made fun of, of Ballard and uh, he jokingly in a skit said told told one of the guys hey if you need if you need an attorney we'll go up to Larson's and find you one so um, anyway I just want to show you this neighborhood we'll head over to Whittier Whittier Heights next which is just a little bit further east of, of here so let's get after it so there's a walk just through Loyal Heights here You'll notice that it's a lot, there's a lot of trees. Seattle loves all these trees, which is great. You get some shade, the tree-lined streets. Hard to make out, you know, some of the types of houses here. But you see a lot of bungalows, a lot of craftsmen, uh, homes. This one we're coming up to is a newer contemporary job, uh, but a good mix of, of different types of housing. We'll start to see some townhomes coming in as well as Seattle makes some changes to their zoning to allow for cottage style homes and uh, different zoning types. And, and one of the things that they're able to do is, is bring in those townhomes to increase density. So, uh, but just wanted to kind of give you a feel as we walk through Loyal Heights to give you an idea. Whittier Heights is gonna have a lot of the same feel to it. Uh, there's one little pocket that I want to show you that has a couple of restaurants over in Whittier Heights. And, but just wanted to give you an idea of, you know, hey, if you're going to go take the kids or the dog out for a walk or take a walk yourself around the neighborhood, what would you expect to see? And uh, what would the neighborhood look like? So hopefully this is giving you a, a good sense of that. So now we've made it over to Whittier Heights there. And uh, Whittier starts on 65th, just north of Ballard High School. It runs east. Um, from 8th Avenue over to 15th and then up to 85th there and uh, just walking through I wanted to show you kind of one of the little pocket neighborhoods there's a handful I was telling you about the trolleys and pocket neighborhoods earlier just around the corner here uh, between 70th or excuse me on 70th from 15th uh, over to uh, 14th is one of those little neighborhoods so we've got to take a walk around Whittier Heights too. And uh, one of the things, like this section of town here, 73rd and uh, like 10th is, you know, I love this area, these neighborhoods and uh, walking over 
one of the things I think about when I'm thinking about real estate, thinking about houses is, is that, you know, you can't change the lot size, you can't change the location. Uh, and so you really want to look at property that has the, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm assuming you're watching this video because you're thinking about relocating, right? Uh, but you want to look at property that where the builders use the best assets of that property, right? And so I think about the Pacific Northwest and yeah, it's, it's sunny and hot out here today. Uh, but a lot of the times, you know, it doesn't rain here more than New York or some of the other places, but it is gray and we do get a lot of gray a lot of the time. And so you really want to think about, hey, where is the sun going to come into my windows? It, am I going to get good exposure in the backyard? And some of the things where, you know, if you're facing west, you're gonna get that afternoon sun on the front of your house, like these guys behind me, right? So they're getting good sun, might be hot in the summer, but that might be a real benefit in the winter to get that natural light, right? And then where I'm standing right here, I'm gonna show you the sign. This is 73rd and 10th, okay? You've got those those brick, uh, now I guess they kind of are tutors behind me, and then, I'm gonna have the camera in that pocket right here south of me. Uh, you're not gonna be able to see it on this camera, but that this Space Needle, you can see the top of the Space Needle there because we're sloping down from the top of the hill. Kind of slopes down. North of Ballard is Crown Hill uh, in, with Greenwood and Finney Ridge to our east. But as you get to the top, this all slopes down towards the cut. And so you're on this slope, even as you go over to Sunset Hill, slopes way down to golden gardens and so one of the things i think about a lot of times is hey are we are you, are you buying a house that you're going to love for a long time it's going to suit your needs for a long time and what's your what's your sunlight situation going to look like in the winter time so this is actually one of my favorite areas this couple of blocks right in here 73rd 10th 9th around there uh, i just like the wide sidewalks and the way that the streets are set up and the neighborhood feel up here uh it's really pretty you know sunset still ha sunset hill has that this portion of whittier heights has that uh there's a few spots in loyal heights that have that but you know how it goes every street uh lot and block it gets a little different you know and as you move down into the kind of industrial corridor down there in adams it's a, a lot of a different design and appeal down there so Now I promised at the end of the video, I was gonna talk more about homelessness and crime. Now I don't, I was on that website next door for half a minute. It just, too many cameras in the streets, too many suspicious behavior, too much activity. Uh, and uh, when I lived in Ballard, uh, I just couldn't take that website. So I got off of there. Uh, didn't have cameras on my house or my doorbell when I lived in Ballard. And, you know, I'm driving a 09 Ford Escape now, but a few years back I had a 1979 Volvo 245 station wagon. And if you are uh, a motorhead and you know anything about the, the 240 series from Volvo back in the day, back in the 70s, that, that car uh, is one of the highly sought after cars for people that are into vintage Volvos, right? So love that car and I just uh, unfortunately had to let it go. The reason I'm telling you that is because, man, it didn't have electric door locks, it didn't have an alarm system. One time a guy, because they're sought after and people want them, somebody stole my taillight lens. Must have been redoing his, decided he needed mine, and he took it, okay? So that's the worst thing that happened to me in Ballard, and it's the only thing that happened to me in Ballard. Now, the other thing is, is that I hate to admit it, but because it didn't have automatic door locks, I would leave my car unlocked all the time. It just happened to happen. So unlock doors and <laughs> I hate to admit this and, and tell you, but I'm going to share. Sometimes I would leave my computer in there. Sometimes I would leave my, um, my wallet in there and right out in the open. And I never had a broken window. I never had anybody break into my car to get anything i don't know if that's a consequence of i was driving an older volvo and ballard you know is riddled with old volvos kind of 
kind of, you know, the running joke out here for a while about how, you know, all the, all the Volvos in the area. Um, but anyway, so in so far as crime, a lot of folks really believe that, that crime is on, petty theft is on the uptick. We have a lot of package theft. Uh, I don't get a lot of packages. I don't have Amazon Prime, so I don't have that problem. I, uh, you know, a lot of people that talk about that sort of thing, you know, they're getting mail delivered unsecure to their doorstep and, and it's walking away. Super unfortunate, super sad, but that it does happen and it does happen here in Ballard. Um, it's a city, you know, so <laughs> I don't know. I mitigate, I don't have that issue because I don't, I don't do, I don't do a lot of shopping. I don't do that. Uh, insofar as homelessness, Ballard, because of the industrial area, because of, you know, eighth being a thoroughfare that isn't as highly trafficked as 15th, you know, we've got motorhomes parked on eighth. You know, you saw down on Leary, there's motorhomes. Uh, there's been a lot of mitigation. There were some camps. Uh, at the Ballard Commons Park, we didn't we didn't go over there. It's kind of on the cusp of Sunset Hill and uh, uh, Loyal Heights there, around 24th by the QFC and the skate park. Uh, but they they did a sweep, and all those uh, hopefully those people made it into transitional housing. Um, I know that you can listen to all the reports on the news. People choose to do that housing. People choose don't not to do that housing. Um, but that's what happened there. There was another park in West Woodland that was a triangle park that they cleared and fenced off. And so we see less of that. We see those eco blocks that people put in and uh, uh, we, so we see less of that. All right, so you made it through Whittier Heights, all five neighborhoods in Ballard. And here's the deal. If you're thinking about making a move out this direction, reach out to us, give us a call, shoot me a text, put time on my calendar. Let's have a chat, a brainstorm to see if it makes sense, what neighborhoods are best gonna fit your lifestyle and uh, uh, find you a place that makes the most sense for you. So just got off 80th, it's a little busy, the cross street east to west. So I'm going up Dibble, north on Dibble. But you can see right behind me, there's, there's a motor home, guys out there trying to fix it. Uh, don't want to, you know, invade too much of his privacy, but you can see it back there. Uh, and so you do see it. So it is around. You'll, you'll see it, you know, mostly on thoroughfares. You'll see it in some side streets in the neighborhoods every once in a while, but it's pretty rare. So, you know, I don't want to pretend I'm oblivious to it. Uh, there is crime. It's a city. Uh, there is trash in the you know streets of Seattle, downtown and out you know downtown Ballard at the Adams area. Uh, there's trash. There's there's people that are living on the street, living in tents behind behind some of those industrial buildings, living in tents in these in these medians, and it's prevalent. It's gotten better um, over the last even six months. Uh, but it's still not great. So you got to know that you got to know what to expect. I tried to show you uh, everything, but uh, um, you know, I don't want to blow it out of the proportion, but I also don't want to um, not show you. So, so in so far as crime, that's kind of where things sat. You know, I'm, I feel comfortable, you know, down in those areas. I've never felt uncomfortable in those areas. I see the world through the eyes of a white man. So that's, <laughs> the unfortunate truth of this and that's the perspective you're getting from me uh, but if you're let's say uh, an Asian woman you might have a different perspective so I want to try to show you on tape a little bit of what you might expect always pays dividends to visit though before you make a move like that um, I hope that makes sense I hope that doesn't come off uh, to whatever so uh, appreciate you guys staying to the end of the video if you haven't liked and subscribed, do that for me for the YouTube algorithm. I super appreciate that. I wanna get as many details and information out to the people who are looking for it that I can. Like I said before, reach out. I wanna do a really good job for you. Our team helps people make this move all the time. You can give us a call, shoot us a text, and uh, uh, <laughs> and uh, you know put time on my calendar and I'll be there. Um, you know, the best parts of Ballard really are, and I, I hate to end on the crime, but I know that's what a lot of people are looking to, to hear. But here's the best parts of Ballard. The best parts of Ballard are, are these houses on these streets. Uh, the best parts are the breweries. The best parts is you know, how dog friendly it is. The best parts are is that it's one of Seattle's all time best neighborhoods. But I definitely want to give you both sides. So I appreciate you guys watching. Hopefully, everything 
tracks with you and uh, we'll see you in the next video. All right, talk to you.